So today I want to talk about five unsolved mysteries of the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima. Because there's a lot of things about Our Lady of Fatima, about her apparitions, that are still unexplained, still unanswered for. And I'm going to look at five of those today. So many of you will remember that after Our Lady appears to the children on the 13th of May, the children, or Lucy, immediately asks Our Lady about two children who died recently from the village. One of them is Maria das Neves. Our Lady says that Maria das Neves is in heaven, so we can all be praying to her. She's a saint. And then Lucia asks about Amelia. And Our Lady says, Amelia will be in purgatory until the end of the world. And here is one of the mysteries. What sins had Amelia committed? I've looked through some of the literature on the apparitions of Fatima, and one book said that Amelia had been in an adulterous relationship. She was a young girl and had been in a relationship with a married man, and that she had repented of this relationship, made a good confession, and then had died. But there, I don't think there's anything documentary. I don't think there's anything going right back to the days of the apparitions telling us what Amelia did, why she will be in purgatory until the end of the world. And there's something also interesting. I mean, I'm a priest and I've said mass for the repose of the soul of Amelia. And I wonder, does that change the fact? Will she still be in purgatory to the end of the world? I'm sure many priests have offered mass for Amelia. So here's a mystery that Our Lady has told us that Amelia will be in purgatory until the end of the world. Was that something conditional, conditional on there not being masses said for her? We don't know this. All we know is that Our Lady has said that Amelia will be in purgatory until the end of the world. So the second mystery then relates to Francisco. Again, from the first apparition, our lady, our lady is asked by, by Lucia, what about Francisco? What about Francisco? Will he be going to heaven too? And Our Lady replies, yes, but first of all, he will have to say many rosaries. And this is mysterious. It's mysterious. And many people have wondered over the years, why did Our Lady say that about little Francisco? If you read his life that Lucia has written for us, it seems uh, that little Francisco was extremely holy. All those hours he spent before the hidden Jesus in the tabernacle, and even before Our Lady appeared to him, he was a very good lad. There's that story about him rescuing a little bird from the cruel boys. There are those stories of him lending a holy card to some other children and not worrying when the holy card gets gets ripped up. He was a good lad. Why is it that Our Lady has said that for him to go to heaven, he will need to say many rosaries first? Some scholars have suggested that Our Lady isn't saying that Francisco is a very bad boy and that's why he needs to say so many rosaries. It's rather Our Lady is saying, don't get your bags packed, Francisco. You're still going to have to say many rosaries first. You're not going quite yet. And it's true because, because he lived another two years after that first apparition. And other people say that maybe Our Lady is saying that the particular vocation Francisco has is to pray many rosaries. And so he will have to fulfill his vocation before he is called to heaven. But it's an unsolved mystery. We don't really know why Our Lady said that Francisco would have to pray many rosaries before he could go to heaven. So the third mystery relates to the August the 15th apparition of Our Lady. The children, of course, had been kidnapped on the 13th of August, so they didn't see Our Lady appearing on that day. But on the 15th, she appeared. 
And the children asked Our Lady, what shall we do with the money that has been left at the Kova? And Our Lady gives this interesting, mysterious reply. She tells the children to have two litters made, two kind of carrying um, equipments to carry some statues through the through the town and our lady says have these two litters made and use them on the feast of our lady of the rosary i want francisco and another boy dressed in white to carry one of them and jacinta and lucia dressed in white to carry the other so what's mysterious about this well the mysterious thing is did that procession ever take place. Our Lady has requested for these litters to be made where the litters made and then she's asked the children to carry to carry obviously some kind of statues on these litters to carry them in a procession on the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. Did that ever happen? It's something that for some reason has intrigued me quite a lot over the years and I actually sent a message to Father Nicholas Gruner back when he was alive, God rest his soul, I sent a message to him on his YouTube channel on this very subject, asking him, did this procession take place? And you can actually see his video response. And unfortunately, a holy man, though he certainly was, he doesn't give me a direct answer to the question. He doesn't know. He doesn't know if the procession ever did take place. And so it remains very mysterious. Why did Our Lady on August the 15th ask for this if she knew that such an event would never take place? Or maybe it did take place. The event is still shrouded in mystery. Okay, now getting on to some familiar territory for some of the audience. Our Lady, after she showed the children the vision of hell, and after she prophesied the rise of the of a worse world war in the reign of Pope Pius XI, that's interesting itself because most people think the Second World War broke out in the reign of Pius XII. But anyway, we'll put that to one side. And after she said about the rise of communism, Russia spreading her errors, all of these things, there was then something else told to the children, what has been referred to as the third secret. And something that's really mysterious is the fact that for many years, we were given the first four words of the secret. The dogma of the faith will always remain in Portugal. It's more than four words, but the first words of the secret, the dogma of the faith, would always remain in Portugal. And then it was dot, dot, dot. That was, that's mysterious. It's mysterious on so many levels. First of all, how has the dogma of the faith remained in Portugal? Because it, it doesn't look like it has, because Portugal has lapsed just as much as the rest of Europe. In fact, in some ways, it's even worse. Try going to daily mass in Portugal. Try visiting the Blessed Sacrament in Portugal. All the churches are closed uh, during the day. So Portugal doesn't seem to have held on to the dogma of the faith. The seminaries are empty. The old rite, the traditional mass, it's not being offered in Portugal. So how is the dogma of the faith remaining in Portugal? The, the, the statement of Our Lady is very mysterious. I remember saying this, just talking to about this with uh, Chris Ferreira, uh, one of the real Fatima experts out there. And Chris Ferreira, um, he said to me, uh, yeah, it's confusing. He didn't really have an explanation either. It's mysterious. And to add to the mystery, that little message, the dogma of the faith will always remain in Portugal, hasn't appeared in any official version of the third secret. What happened to those words? Where did they come from and where have they gone to? The whole thing is very mysterious. Okay, and last of all, the date of the release of the third secret. 
We all know that Sister Lucy, a little while after she had entered the convent, she became really unwell and she wrote down the secret. She thought she was going to die and so she wrote down the secret and then she sent it to her bishop and then it was sent on to Rome, sealed in an envelope. And it was said that the secret should be released in 1960, not before and seemingly not after. Lucia said it should be released in 1960 because then it will be clear. Then it will be clear. That's why it should be released only in 1960. So that's mysterious. Why was this date of 1960 given by Our Lady? And second of all, why is it that Pope John XXIII chose not to release the secret? In fact, he read the secret at that point, but said, it is not for this time. That was his opinion. Our Lady had felt otherwise. Why is it that he chose not to release the secret? Um, it's a mystery. It's a mystery because it seems like we still don't have the full version of the third secret. That seems pretty obvious because Our Lady, after she after she really gave the children the third secret, Our Lady said, tell no one. Francisco, yes, you can tell him. And if the third secret had just been a vision of a bishop in white getting shot, then Francisco would have seen it. He saw all the visions. He just didn't hear the message. So there clearly was a message. And that message, uh, Sister Lucy or Lucia had to tell to Francisco. So there was a message and presumably it began or included the words, the dogma of the faith will always remain in Portugal. And that message was meant to be released in 1960. What it really contained seems to me still a mystery to this day. Most of the Fatima scholars suggest that this secret really was about an apostasy from within the church and a, a top-down apostasy from within the church. It seems to me that the writings of, I think it's Brother Michael of the Holy Trinity, he has done a lot of research on this subject and that seems to be the most likely thing. Other people like to say that the secret was about a new mass, a new liturgy, that kind of thing. Possibly, or some people say an attack, an attack on the family, possibly. But I think, I think, and this is linking to Garabandal now, because Our Lady, if she did appear in Garabandal, a lot of people think that the second message of Garabandal, the one in 1965, that that is the message of Fatima, the third secret of Fatima that was never released. Namely, many bishops, priests and cardinals are on the road to perdition and taking many souls with them. Perhaps, but ultimately this is a mystery and this is still the greatest mystery of the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.